There's lies, damned lies, and benchmarks, and I still am super confused about Zen 5 and the launch, but I've got a bunch of machines behind me running Linux and Windows, including the Windows Insider Preview. I don't know what to make of it, but I'll show you what I've found so far. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing you have to understand is that there probably is a problem with the branch predictor or something at a low level with the Zen 5 processors. Probably in the Agiza, probably something silly that is less likely to happen on Linux, more likely to happen in Windows in certain scenarios. And the certain scenarios is very important. We need to talk about that because it's going to be widely misunderstood. <sighs> This took me a while to figure out too. At least I think what is happening. But more importantly, this is not going to be a breathtakingly dramatic performance improvement, except in a couple of weird outlier cases. Like it depends on what we're talking about when we're talking about performance improvement or not. You're not going to go from 200 to 250 FPS in your game generally, but there are some really weird things going on right now. The first thing that we need to talk about is called virtualization based security. This is a good thing. It's on by default now in Windows. If you go back to like the 7700X reviews, virtualization based security, I think at that time was off by default. A lot of reviews had virtualization based security off. Some of them didn't. Uh, your, your, you know, you know, your favorite folks have, uh, done Herculean things to do testing and VBS on or VBS off, it makes more sense to test with virtualization based security on. The problem is that historically it hasn't really had that much of a performance impact. So take for example, Cyberpunk 2077, which is a loaded example with a 7700X, we're talking about 147 to 148 FPS using the 1080p high preset virtualization based security on or off. The problem becomes that the 9700X with the default BIOS configuration on an ASRock Tai Chi motherboard and also the Asus Hero motherboard, I tested both. Um, the performance difference is a bit different. All right, so with the, with the out of the box defaults for Cyberpunk 2077 1080p high, 193.18 FPS on this particular run, and this is with Windows 11 Pro 26100. This is the insider preview that should have the corrected branch prediction stuff, theoretically, probably. With VBS on, the performance regresses to 167.41. Now, this is not a universal behavior. Some games don't show a regression, like Forspoken, uh, Far Cry for the most part don't really show a regression. It just, it depends on the game and it depends on some other parameters. I'm not sure that this regression can be attributed only to something went wrong with the branch predictor. In fact, I don't know what's going on to do this because Zen 5 generally has much better IOMMU and much better virtualization extensions. So the virtualization stuff should run like a bat out of hell, period. Like that's just, there's stuff in Zen 5 that is amazing for that on the Linux side, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, compounding that a little bit, Cyberpunk 2077, I can get 205.07 FPS, and that's even on Windows 11 22.621. That's the, the version that we all have. That's not the insider version. That's just the regular version of Windows 11. And it's not because of this. The performance between the insider version for Cyberpunk and this one is basically identical. The change with this one is actually modifying some settings in the BIOS, which I will show you in a second, and we'll walk through that separately. I'm going to try, this, try to keep this organized according to chapters. But the difference from, you know, 193, 195 FPS to 205 FPS, that's another 5%. And it's not because of, um, it's not because of the, the Windows branch or anything like that. For this game, it's just virtualization based security. And it's a big leap to go from 163 or 173, if you make the same BIOS changes, uh, FPS at 1080p high to this. I also want to be clear, at higher resolutions where you are less CPU limited, the uh, performance impact of these things is less. The you Think of it like for every frame, you're paying a penalty 
for something going wrong in the overhead. And so Microsoft says in virtualization-based security, your overhead should be 1% to 3%. I know from the VFIO work that I've been doing for a decade that if you do virtual machine pass-through correctly with a PCIe device, generally your overhead is going to be 1% to 3%. We've had CPU extensions that function in that manner for the better part of six, seven years at this point. I mean, okay, yeah, it started in the enterprise, but it has trickled down to the, the desktop in the last five years, certainly of desktop CPUs that are, you know, middle of the road or upper middle of the road have the virtualization extensions to have a relatively small amount of overhead when we're talking about passing through uh, stuff and running VFIO in Linux. That's kind of related to virtualization-based security that we see here like generally it's going to be a one to three percent overhead that's what microsoft's internal developer documentation is it's it's generally a one to three percent overhead so something is going wrong and we know that zen 4 doesn't suffer from this i think it is probably an enablement bug or something that amd will figure out or possibly some problem between windows and amd it's like okay it's a really easy fix let's see how it works on linux i'm getting to that wait for the chapters the other thing to understand with virtualization based security like if you'd go to windows and you go to core isolation some people think just toggling core isolation on and off is what you need to do but it's not correct the best way is to disable svm in bios and the reason for that is because if you're running a Hyper-V role or you have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed and especially WSL2, uh, it depends on the same pair of virtualized, you know, hypervisor that is like Windows within Windows thing that goes on with virtualization-based security. So even if you don't have core isolation turned on in VBS, if you have SVM enabled and you have some of those other win Windows features turned on, you will suffer from the performance degradation if the particular thing that you're using is affected by the performance degradation in the first place. It's not a guarantee that you'll be negatively impacted. So like for Spoken, it only makes a couple of FPS difference in my testing between Insider Preview and uh, regular old Windows 11 as of, uh, you know, the 19th of August, 2024. Um, but there are other games that are negatively impacted. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, interestingly, uh, has the opposite problem where uh, with the virtualization-based security, the performance is worse. It's about 205, 210 FPS uh, versus roughly 267 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an ancient game. <laughs> the gains are going to be more in older games. So, like, those games, it seems to be the case that that games that are more than about four or five years old benefit the most. And it's probably more, you know, more L1, L2 cache changes, other changes in Zen 5, general IPC uplift. Um, there's a lot of hidden stuff yet to, to discover here. But the virtualization-based security and, like, understanding that, I think it is, is an important part. Most of the testing that I do, I start with virtualization-based security off and then switch it on later to just, you know, do it as, as kind of a sanity check. Um, in this case, because it was kind of a rushed launch, most of the testing that I did was with virtualization-based security off. Now, here's the admin mode thing. So if you have virtualization-based security on and you actually are running admin mode in the way that AMD is talking about, I think that is effectively the same as running under a process that is running outside the virtualization-based security. So if you just right-click on something and run as administrator, theoretically, that should be the same as running something as administrator, except apparently in Windows 11, in some scenarios, if you're running this process with a higher level of permissions, it's almost like a system level permission as opposed to administrator, you're effectively running those threads with virtualization-based security disabled. So if you run a game with a virtualization-based security disabled, um, you're probably going to get performance numbers that are really similar to as if virtualization-based security was disabled on the whole, the whole system. That's what I was able to reproduce with Cyberpunk 2077. So for Cyberpunk 2077, three different major things in play. Just to recap. Virtualization-based security doesn't really make a huge impact. It's one FPS for the 7700X. For the 9700X, which, by the way, the reason I'm using a 9700X is to just 
do away with the whole core parking non that is a whole other enchilada that i don't even have time to get into in this video <laughs> and installing utility and forcibly reinstalling windows we're not going to talk about that that is worrying but we're not going to talk about that anyway virtualization based security some things are affected by it some things are not affected by it Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the games that is affected by it. Interestingly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is affected by it, but in the opposite way. So I'm just using that as an illustration. Most games are negatively impacted by virtualization-based security being on, but usually not a lot. How do you know if you're running virtualization-based security? Well, you can check core isolation. You can also run MS Info and go to System Information and scroll down, and you will see virtualization-based security not enabled if it's not enabled or it'll it'll be enabled but really the best way to turn it on and off is to turn svm on and off in the bios rather than toggling a windows feature because even if windows is saying that it's off it is off but the performance implication of it is not off when you're ha when you have a windows hyper v role installed uh or like the virtual machine services or you're running windows subsystem for linux or anything like that and that is a windows thing that is just I don't know what's going on with that. It's interesting. This is what I know. I'm just telling you what I know, what I've encountered so far, and it should be really easy to test this and reproduce this because I've reinstalled Windows like 47 times. With Forspoken, it's the difference between 194 and 196 FPS. It's only a two FPS loss. And the security, like you should not run with virtualization-based security disabled. It's good. It's very good. It's a very good way to isolate things. I mean, that's the whole thing, the whole reason I got into VFIO is I could run Linux as a host machine and I could relegate Windows to a nice confined little sandbox. So what all the, the kernel malware and, you know, whatever horrors Sony decides to visit upon me with their root kits or whatever, all that lives in that nice little sandbox. And I can have a different Windows VM for doing important things like, you know, banking and taxes and whatever. And I can have a different Windows VM for whatever. Like that's what I've done since time immemorial. And so this has been really interesting with this Zen 5 launch because there's a lot of stuff here that doesn't make sense. And to be clear, I don't think that AMD has done anything catastrophically wrong or they've mismanaged things. I think that there's a lot of moving parts here with Windows and changes to Windows internals and how virtualization-based security, like something is going wrong there to negatively impact games. But again, except for a few outliers, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference tomorrow if we figure out exactly what uh, what all is going on here and also to be clear like a lot of the tribalism is worrying so if we look at what you know gamers nexus has done and what hardware unbox has done with their reviewing and testing it is a very very good methodology and it is very well put together and as far as i know i talked to steve well it's steve at, at gamers nexus virtualization based security is on that they do with their testing all of that looks really solid and so the vitriol and the negativity and the comments like that tribalism needs to stop. That doesn't help anyone at all. There is a mystery and it's like we can figure out a mystery, but it doesn't have to turn into this weird tribal crazy insanity thing where, you know, people posting things that I said that they missed the context, you know, it just stirs up trouble that it doesn't make any sense to do. Like it just... It's like, there's something anomalous. Let's investigate the anomaly. Let's not, you know, turn it into some sort of weird grudge match, you know, Roman Colosseum thing. I don't, I don't get that. Let's talk about Linux. This is Linux. You might notice that our average FPS here is 374. Yes, indeed. It is 374. This is one of the outliers. This is running on a 4090. The NVIDIA plus Vulkan, I really got to hand it to the NVIDIA team. In, in, like my, my personal system has a 7900 XTX. And so mostly on Linux, I'm gaming on a 7900 XTX. It's the ASRock Aqua. It's water cool. Love it. Uh, the last time that I spent a lot of time with NVIDIA, NVIDIA plus Vulkan, not amazing. Things have improved a fair bit with uh, NVIDIA and Vulkan. So just to keep everything consistent... 4090 over here same as the you know you might notice there's a bunch of reference 4090s behind me 374 fps this is an outlier this is 33 percent more and so this is the the, the crazy dangerous like <sighs> do not do not take this out of context and run to steve or steve and just be like oh my god no no stop that <laughs> we don't need that level of tribalism they do good work
I promise. They do. It, it, it's, it's phenomenal the amount of work that they are able to get done because they are so well organized and they understand the thing that they are testing. It makes sense. This is not the only game that's like this, though. Far Cry 6, I think, is more generally representative. So, Cyberpunk... While it's running the benchmark, I'll, I'll just sort of level with you. Cyberpunk 2077, as it turns out, since version like 2-ish, has already been faster in Linux than Windows, by a significant margin. In some configurations, some screen configurations, and I'm running some other stuff, Cyberpunk 2077 is like 25% faster on Linux than Windows, but only a few configurations. And remember, I'm sort of laser focused on 1080p high because that's the more CPU limited scenario. And remember, when we move up to 1440p and 4K, these little changes matter a lot less. The difference between Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Linux versus Windows, it matters a lot less. And actually, I'm doing these benchmarks completely wrong, which I'll explain in a minute. Like, I'm, you, your mindset isn't right when you're comparing Windows directly to Linux. You cannot do that. It's got to be a Zen 4 to Zen 5 comparison. I'll talk more about that in a second. Far Cry 6. So, 199, 199, 200, 201. That's pretty much what I consistently get. 1080p full screen graphics quality high running on Linux. And the 192 FPS in Far Cry here is from our best case scenario in Windows. That's the insider build of Windows. So that's like 5% best case scenario and generally 5, 6% is what you can expect on Linux generally for a performance uplift, assuming that it works in the first place. Uh, Borderlands 3, for example, if you run the Borderlands 3, if you just do the out of the box configuration with Borderlands 3 on Steam, the game will crash. You will get an error message. And this is more typical of the gaming on Linux experience versus Windows. Like there's not as many Linux gamers as I would like to see out there, but we have come light years in the last four or five years. Gaming on Linux is more accessible today in 2024 than it has ever been, but it's still not at parity with Windows. The Windows experience is different from and um, more masses friendly for gaming scenarios than Linux is. Now, do I wish Linux was more friendly and do I have a lot of hopium and copium that Linux is better someday? Yes, sure. Is it better today? No. Generally, no. For me, I love it. It's great. I have better tools to figure this out. Uh, by the way, this is on a 9950X. I don't have any of the core parking bullshit at all. Linux doesn't care. This is fine. Well, hang on there, Chuckles. Core parking on Linux is actually a thing. There's a utility called the game mode, which will improve performance 1% to 3%. More what was going on in the back of my mind was sort of a meta commentary running where the scheduler on Windows is a little bit opaque, and you have companies that are making products like Process Lasso to try to make that up, and then you have AMD doing this driver that you install that may permanently alter the operating system in order to manage game priority and game scheduling. Meanwhile, on Linux, Linus Torvalds has recognized that uh, scheduling is hard. And even though the Linux scheduler is very good, it is not omniscient. And so a number of facilities have been provided for user space programs. One of those user space programs is called game mode. It's a thing that you can run and it'll make sure that a game is scheduled on a, uh, a CCD that has 3V cache or something like that. And that can help performance a little bit more. And most distros don't come with game mode configured out of the box. That's an adventure for you. Uh, you know, for the new life that you've adopted as a Linux gamer, you're in for some adventures. There's some rough edges. Now, just for giggles, for the, for like the real benchmarks, yes, I did disable eight cores. So just to make sure apples to apples, there wasn't something really insane going on. But in day to day usage, Linux is smart enough to not cause horrible problems because you've got two CCDs. Now for F1 2023, it's on high, not ultra high, 1920 by 1080. We're going to do the Bahrain track during rain. Bahrain in the rain. Ha. Ah. Linux also still has fun problems like this. Like, this is just... It's just a texture mapping coordinate problem. It's just a texture mapping coordinate problem, but... Welcome to gaming on Linux. <laughs> Meanwhile, F1 2023 on Windows. F1 2023 is the exception the other way, or an outlier the other way. In Windows, it's 313 FPS. And in Linux, our average was 294 FPS. 
<laughs> Advantage Windows, but this is with virtualization-based security on. But with virtualization-based security disabled or the benchmark equivalent of running in admin mode in the true admin mode, even when VBS is on, you get 326 FPS. So F1 2023 on Linux doesn't run as well as F1 2023 on Windows. Even when using game mode run, even when using, you know, pulling out the stops, there are a couple of things you can do to bring it up a little closer in Linux, but I would say more often than not, you encounter a rough edge like this with a game or, you know, just a crash or it doesn't work. But still, things are better than they were years ago. Now I mentioned that I'm doing the benchmarking wrong, and this is a very important chapter in this video. We cannot directly compare games on Linux to games on Windows. That are They're not the same. They're probably not rendered the same. The graphics probably don't look the same. There's a lot that is not exactly the same. And I cannot stress this enough. The way to do this correctly would be to benchmark a bunch of games on Zen 4, and then swap the CPU from Zen 4 to Zen 5, 7700X to a 9700X. I started to do that on Windows for this video, and that is when I ran into the whole virtualization-based security and the performance anomalies and the BIOS settings, which we haven't talked about yet. That's the next chapter, or that's the coming chapter. And the problem that I ran into with Windows is that the performance is wildly inconsistent. I had trouble replicating the um, results from the AMD review guide um, and unless I hand-tuned a bunch of things and also made changes in the BIOS. And then I could get pretty close, but it varied a little bit from game to game. So with some games virtualization-based security on, like Cyberpunk 2077, uh, would not put me anywhere remotely in the right ballpark for the performance of Cyberpunk 2077 as explained in the reviewer guide, even when I was using the insider version of Windows 11, uh, the, the, the developer branch, the you saw it on the screenshot that version. Retail didn't really matter. And interestingly, there wasn't a huge performance difference, like one-ish FPS, between the retail version and the insider version. So there may be something else coming. I don't know. Again, a lot of mysteries. I'm just sharing with you what I have. And so in trying to do an apples to apples comparison from Zen 4 to Zen 5, for virtualization-based security off to virtualization-based security off, that's a pretty significant uplift, generally, except for a couple of outliers like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If we use that as the basis for computing the percent uplift for from Zen 4 to Zen 5 on Windows, then the thing to compare it to is going to be the percent uplift on Linux from Zen 4 to Zen 5. So with Zen 4, you would run a bunch of tests with games on Linux, and you would swap your CPU to Zen 5, and then you would run a bunch of tests on Linux and say, what is the percentage performance gain on Linux versus Windows for the same set of games? Because again, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Linux is not necessarily rendering everything exactly the same way as Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Windows. Shadow of the Tomb Raider might not actually be the best example because the game company actually did put a fair bit of work into trying to make them as like for like as possible. But generally, I would say it is fair that you can't really 100% trust that. Because Shadow of the Tomb Raider was already faster on Zen 4 on Linux. So if you look at it that way, the performance uplift and, and Cyberpunk is already faster on Linux. If you look at it that way, the performance difference between Windows and Linux for Zen 4 to Zen 5, it's like plus 15, 16, 18%. And I might have to throw out one or two of those outliers, but generally it's on the order of about 6% over Windows. And so if we're talking about a game that's running at, you know, 200 FPS, you're going to get 210 FPS on Linux. That is not earth shattering. That is not a huge difference. There are some games that have unexplainably bad behavior on Windows with Zen 5. I have no idea what's going on there. It's interesting, but I have no idea what's going on there. And there's more yet to discover. And so Cyberpunk with this, this delineation is the perfect example because it trips over every single possible regression that you can have. Some of them are Zen 5, some of them are Windows related, maybe some of them are branch pr predictor related. I don't know, but this is what I ran into when I was gonna do the comparison for Windows on Linux. 
depending on what configuration of Windows I have, or even what version of Windows I have, it makes a pretty big difference in the way the game performs. At the low end, with virtualization-based security on, you know, it's way under 195, 170, 160, 170, depending on some other parameters. With virtualization-based security on. With virtualization-based security off, or VBS on but running as admin mode, basically the same difference, you can get 195 FPS with uh, that configuration. And if you fiddle around in the BIOS, you can get up to 205 to 200, mostly, well, closer to 205 FPS. On Linux, you can get 200 to 205 FPS without fiddling in the BIOS and without doing anything, and it just works. Mm -hmm. And you can get upwards of 210 FPS if you fiddle in the BIOS and experiment with it and find the thing that works specifically for Cyberpunk. But that may change how other games perform. It definitely seems like it does change how some games perform. So you may be optimizing specifically for Cyberpunk. So I think the 5% that I'm talking about is really, you know, rule of thumb 5%. It's not a hard and fast 5%. It's just that these parameters do actually make a difference. So being verbose about that so that you don't take it out of context. It's just an anomaly and something interesting. Oh, and another way that I know that the gaming experience is better... Gaming on Linux is better than gaming on ARM with the Windows emulation layer. Like, you don't have to take my word for it. I mean, even Linus did a live stream where like 50% of the games actually worked on ARM. Hey, Linux has a better track record than ARM at this point for, for games. So that's exciting. Oh, and the other problem with benchmarking on Linux is we're not even talking about frame times and frame pacing. Generally, frame times and frame pacing are going to be better on Windows than they are on Linux because... Linux is more nascent. It's a, it's a newer platform with a new set of problems. It's also true that Valve, Valve investing a kajillion dollars in making the Linux gaming ecosystem really cannot be understated here. They have greased a lot of independent developers in the form of money, making it so that like really talented people so they can get stuff done, but also the Valve internal people. And Valve's goals are not necessarily the highest frame times or anything like that. Really, like if you look at the Steam Deck, they're really more concerned with consistency, things that conserve power. Uh, you won't see the game spiking as high at the absolute maximum frame rate, especially when we're talking about hundreds of FPS. Their design goals are a little different and a little bit more fine-grained control. And the Linux operating system gives them that. from the Top down, from the scheduler to all the little minutia of anything that they could possibly want to work on, Vulcan, you name it. And so your gaming experience on Linux, like for like, even if the FPS is 100 FPS more, is not necessarily going to be the same. Now, if you look at the trajectory of improvements over time, so if like you look at the engineering and everything that's going into Windows and some of the cruft that's creeping into Windows, and maybe they're trying to take that out with the new, you know, 26100, the new dev channel version, like the release channel preview as of August 2024. It looks like Microsoft is trying to improve those experiences, like Game Bar and all this kind of stuff. Microsoft is sort of recognizing, oh, we actually do need to look at when a game is running and maybe try to have some of the background stuff be a little quiet so that the game performance is better. Uh, and Linux, certainly being as good as it is, is going to have to push Microsoft to be better. I think that's also true. But the rate that Linux is improving far exceeds the rate that uh, Windows is not shooting itself in the foot. And so at some point, there will be a crossover. That point is not today. That point is not in August 2024. That point is not with the release of Zen 5. That point is not even six months from now. But I can see a time where if the trends continue, there will be a crossover point. For handhelds, it's already happened. Look at the disaster that is Windows on handhelds versus SteamOS. And now Valve coming out with SteamOS on handhelds, just arbitrary handhelds. That is going to improve the Linux ecosystem for everybody because now Valve has to help support a larger ecosystem of handhelds. And gamers on handheld systems generally are going to have a better experience with Linux than they are with Windows. Not because Windows you know, is not like Windows actually, I would say probably is better for gaming right now in August, 2024, but just because of the handheld experience, like trying to get a good handheld experience with Windows gaming, Windows is not flexible enough to do that. It's not, there's not enough hooks. There's not enough developer interface that even well-funded companies like Asus can build an amazing handheld 
Windows experience. I mean, for the amount of engineering and everything they put into it, think how much better Steam OS could be. It's like, here is Asus's special flavor of Steam OS or, uh, you know, a ver like work with Valve to try to make that a little bit better and solve problems with games and tune it for their hardware. That probably would be an objectively better experience than Windows gaming on a handheld. That is the trajectory that we're on. It's Linux is iterating and improving faster and providing uh, more exposure to stuff that developers can use to build a better gaming experience. That said, there are a lot of tools that are missing in Linux, like Presentmon that Intel has put together is amazing. It's an amazing, it's, it's changing the way that we think about how gaming should be and frame time and pacing and like maybe a little bit of, uh, I'm being a little hyperbolic there, but we don't have anything like that that is as good on Linux yet. So temper your expectations is what I'm saying. Reel in some of the vitriol, reel in some of the finger pointing that is unnecessary and counterproductive. And Borderlands. You know, Borderlands breaks down basically how you'd expect. Borderlands is an ancient game, but on Linux is 327 FPS, Windows with VBS off is 313, and Windows with VBS on is 296. So yeah, uh, for, for what it's worth, for the same 1080p high settings, the reviewer's guide had 332, 332 to 327, basically within margin of error. It should be possible in some scenario to achieve 332 FPS on Windows. Don't know exactly what AMD was testing, but theoretically, that should basically be at parity between the two systems, you know, 9700X versus 9950X with one CCD disabled, which that actually, I should be testing on two different 9700Xs. This is just to get some numbers that are in a ballpark. This is to get you, the importance of this video is not the specific numbers that you will latch onto and take out of context. The importance of this video is to get your brain in the right gear, more importantly, and then other uh, more diligent folks can fill in the details and do the testing and find the anomalies. And then I'll be glad to help diagnose those anomalies. Now, remember how I said that for some games like Cyberpunk, they like virtualization-based security to be off. Some game. There's there's more than Cyberpunk, but I'm trying to get this video out the door without getting super long-winded, and I don't want to get tripped up over the minutia. In the BIOS, this is again our ASRock Tai Chi BIOS, in the BIOS, there are certain advanced options under the AMD CBS menu, and then under CPU common options. Prefetcher setting, stream hardware prefetcher, everything is on auto. I set everything to explicitly enabled. I also set ACPI uh, underscore CSTC1 declaration to enabled. I set platform first error handling to disabled. Platform first error handling means that if you have a hardware error, it should be reported to Windows. I initially thought that memory training might be related to this. So like if you get a bad DDR5 memory train, your computer will be weirdly slow. That's something I've encountered, especially on Intel systems. You don't really see the errors because the error reporting stuff isn't there, but DDR5 actually has like a retransmit mechanism where it'll retransmit when you get errors on the bus. This is not... ECC the way that ECC is in most uh, like when you talk about D DDR5 ECC this isn't that but DDR5 as a general course even the non error correcting DDR5 DIMMs have an ability to retransmit and it will retransmit from the DIMM to the CPU or the CPU will retransmit uh, to the DIMM in case of a communications error and this is transparent to the user generally like server parts log that kind of thing but on client not so much. Platform first error handling I set to disabled because that should mean that the errors are passed to the operating system. Didn't actually observe that, just so you know. Just the more you know. Uh, and I would actually love to learn more about this. If anybody wants to teach me, if anybody on the sly wants to email me, I will swear that you never email me. Like the engineers that actually work on this, you can, you can teach me. I will learn and I will pretend that you didn't email me because I think you're think it's sort of verboten for you to do that because then you know, it might turn into a kerfuffle if somebody says, Oh my God, this guy inside the thing told me to do this. I'm not. I can keep a secret. Anyway. I also found pause delay to be interesting. It's like after pauses a thread will be this many cycles. 16, 32, 64, disabled. I couldn't tell this was really doing much. 
CPU speculative stores, more aggressive or less aggressive? The help text for this is really interesting. More speculative store instructions will be sent, will send out invalidations to remote cache line copies as soon as possible. I also found the uh, performance behavior change interesting, changing CPU speculative stores mode. You should experiment with more aggressive and less aggressive if you just want to experiment. Like some games work better, some games work the other way. And there's also latency under load, which I disabled. Latency under load is disabled means that um, <laughs> enabling may improve latency in heavy bandwidth scenarios, but may slightly reduce the peak CCD bandwidth. So basically this is saying when the Infinity Fabric is fully loaded, it's going to try to reserve some bandwidth so that the latency is more consistent. But I think for gaming type workloads, it seems like latency under load being disabled by default was better. At least for the benchmarks. Now, real world, like for frame time and frame pacing, that may not actually be true. I don't know. That's going to need more testing. And then here's the SVM enable disable option, which, uh, you know, is useful for disabling the virtualization based security or not and bypassing the whole, oh, it's on anyway, even when it's off, because you have something else on in Windows that forces it on. It's not really, it's not the security part of it. It's the underlying mechanism that goes with it, if that makes sense. There's also this other option, corrector branch predictor enabled. I think, I don't know if auto is enabled or disabled. Enabling for branch heavy codes may reduce conditional branch mispredicts. I have a feeling that some of these settings have been here since, um, Zen 4, and some of these settings may not actually apply to Zen 5. I was just doing experiments, just full disclosure. I don't know. Not a lot of documentation. Now, remember how my best score for the BIOS defaults in Cyberpunk 2077 with virtualization based security was 195 FPS? With those settings, I can achieve 205 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077 and generally see another 5% or so performance uplift in games in Windows. The performance uplift, the 5%, is already there in Linux. To be clear, I love having these knobs and tunables in BIOS. It's great. It's a great experiment. It's great, fun stuff to play with. It sure does look like Windows is flushing the cache lines prematurely, and that's causing some weird performance anomalies, but this is not... Even if that's true, even if it's a worst-case scenario, I don't see the performance getting... 10% better overall. Like it's not, it may be on the order of 10% at best, not 25 or 30%. It's not going to be, uh, oh, here's your 40% IPC uplift this generation. That's just not happening. Well, I say that, but Far Cry actually does improve in the new Insider build by uh, almost 10%. So the Insider build of Windows. It gets it a little closer to performance parity with Linux, but it's not quite there yet. We're still in the 180s range for the same configuration and the same setup. But again, it's not directly comparable Windows to Linux. Really, you need to do Zen 4 uplift to Zen 5 uplift to know how much of this is Zen 5 related and how much of this is just improvement in the Linux ecosystem. But still, it is interesting that this Windows update is going to change at least some things with how this works. And at least for some games, it does seem like you get back a little bit of the regression that occurs with VBS on versus off. For some games, but not every game. Definitely not including Cyberpunk 2077. And I don't know why Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't care about VBS on the 7700X. It's a mystery. For multimedia workloads and everything else, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. Because of AVX 512 and other changes. But for things like gaming workloads, it's a little different than scientific workloads. And so you have to understand that and sort of give, give Zen 5 a wide berth when we're talking about this kind of a workload, gaming workloads versus a uh, scientific compute and more more workstationy type workloads. And that's really the long and short of it. So there you go. And for those of you that are screeching from the rooftops, I expect better behavior. Like you, you I can't police everything. I don't police is probably not the right word, but as a community we have to come together and have a little bit more uh, unification and a little bit less tribalism. The tribalism like there are people in the community that will weaponize the tribalism in order to charge you money to fix your computer, which is crazy. Don't do that. Don't fall for it. It's terrible. Tribalism's bad.
that's all I got for this one. I'm Whittle this level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Uh, let's discuss and or wait until the software people clue us in a little bit more. I don't know. But I'm going to keep banging on it. We'll see what happens. Mm.